Good morning, Calvary. Happy Friday, and this is Pastor Chad with your word for the day. Hey, what is the best counsel you have ever received? Uh, was it something like this? Uh, hey, you should finish school. Or live within your means. <laughs> that was counsel I ignored for a long time. Or maybe it was counsel like you should buy used cars instead of new cars. Or maybe it was just counsel like, hey, you can't do it alone. Ask for help. Uh, see, most of us at some point in our lives, uh, we think we can do it all. We think if you want the job done right, you have to do it yourself. Yeah, by the way, that's horrible counsel. And I believed it. And for the first 10 years that I was here at Calvary, uh, I almost burned out trying to do it all myself and, and thinking that I was necessary to every piece of that. Well, that was 20 years ago, and, and like Moses in our story today, I received some good counsel. Uh, we're in Exodus 18 as we're continuing our look at the journey of freedom for the children of Israel. And, and, and this is a point where the Israelites are camped out in the desert, and Moses' father-in-law, a guy named Jethro, shows up, and he watches what's going on. He sees Moses offering counsel for all the people and the people standing around all day long from sunup to sundown. And at the end of the day, he says to, to Moses, hey, you are wearing yourself and the people out. This is not good. And, and he advised Moses to enlist others to help him oversee the people, to, if you will, provide leadership and counsel for the, the literally millions that were there in the wilderness. And so Moses listened to that advice and he appointed commanders of thousands and hundreds and fifties and tens to oversee the people and only the exceedingly difficult cases came to Moses. In other words, Moses learned how to delegate and how to expand the influence that he had through leaders. So Moses received wise counsel and it blessed him and it blessed the people. So here at Calvary, um, we practice this by doing ministry as a team. Uh, in other words, we, we practice this by believing that the church is the body of Christ and all the parts are necessary and all the parts are important and all the parts play a part. So uh, we share responsibilities. We trust people. And when they mess up, when they fail, we practice uncomfortable grace. But we still love those people and, and help them to succeed. And, and, and at Calvary, we want you to receive wise counsel. And that's why we give away Bibles, because we want people to have the Word of God and read the Word of God, because if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. That's one of our core values called Relatable Truth. And, and so what I want to do is just wrap up this morning offering you some wise counsel from Scripture. Counsel like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. You can trust God and he will direct your steps. But that means you've got to stop trusting your counsel and listening to his. Or how about the counsel that the Apostle Paul offers the church at Philippi? Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but rather with humility of mind, consider others more important than yourself. Do not merely look after your own interests, but also the interests of others. If you want to make a difference in other people's lives, then, then adopt that as your... Um, kind of modus operandi, the way you're going to live your life. And, and then just to close, how about this one? From Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. You probably know this. You could probably sing a song to it. Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them, who hears these words of mine and does them, is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The, the rains came down, the floodwaters rose, and the house stood firm because its foundation was on the rock. But the one who hears these, mind, these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rains came down, the floodwaters rose, and the house fell, and great was its crash because it did not have its foundation on the rock. Today, I hope and pray that you're hearing and applying the wisdom of God in your life. Have a great day. Hope to see you this weekend, Calvary. God bless.